Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the minimum cost spanning tree, which is another application of the greedy algorithm. I hope you know what is the greedy algorithm. If no, you can please visit the previous videos. It's very well explained. So we have a graph. Okay, the graph has a set of vertices called the V and the set of edges called the E. Let this graph be undirected and connected. Connected means we can reach any of the edges or any of the vertices from a given vertex. We can reach all other vertices and undirected means there are no directions. That is if I go from A to B, I can also go from B to A along the same path. Okay. And uh, so what I have to do, I have to construct a subgraph T such that its vertices are the same. That is, it has all the vertices of the graph V. We are only going to change the edges. And the edges will be a subset of the graph G. That is, the number of vertices will be same. We will only reduce the number of edges. So, what is the difference? Between, this will be a tree. What is the difference between tree and graph? The tree has no cycles, whereas the graph can have cycles. Now, what are these cycles? Suppose I have one, two, three here there are no cycles but suppose if I construct this thing this means a cycle cycle means a complete this thing cycle means a cycle right and a spanning tree is a minimal uh, subgraph G dash what is a spanning tree a spanning tree is a minimal subgraph G dash of G such that the vertices of G dash are equal to the vertices of G we only change the number of edges as we discussed that is if we have n vertices then we will have n minus 1 number of edges so let's see this with the help of a problem i have already constructed a graph over here and uh, we'll find out the minimum spanning tree uh, spanning tree for it so what i do i have to first of all suppose any of the root nodes the root node can be any i can take it according to my preference suppose i take one so one I take the minimum of the two paths that is there uh, 1 comma 1 can 1 goes to 6 or 2 when it goes to 6 the cost is 10 when it goes to 2 the cost is 28 my motive is to minimize the cost so I choose this path that is 10 when I reach 6 I have only one path that is 5 and when I reach when I go from 5 from 5 I can go to 6, 7 or 4. But if I go to 6, like there is no logic of going from 5 back to 6. Why? Because I have to traverse more edges, uh, more vertices also. So I choose the smaller of 24 and 22. That is I choose 4. I will write down the cost along with it. So I choose 4. Okay. And after 4, I see 4 can go to 7 and 3. Okay. So I choose 3. Why? Because 3 is the... 3 has the smaller cost. The 3 obviously it, it just goes to 16. I choose 16. And 2. 2 can go to 1 and 7. I forgot to write down the cost here. It's 14 suppose. The 2 can go to 1 and 7. But now if 2 goes to. Obviously you will say that 2 will go to 7. Because the cost is small. Suppose I had 10 over here. Then also I would take 2 to 7 only. Because suppose I had taken an edge from 2 to 1. With a cost of 10. It would have led to a cycle and this would have violated my condition for the tree okay so i will not take this one even if it's small and i will choose this so the cost would be the sum of all these values so i have one two one two three four five six seven vertices n vertices and one two three four five six that is n minus one edges so i have to stop when all my edges are included and I have also to check at each step that there is no cycle. So this is how we form a uh, spanning tree from a given graph. Uh, basically, this is a very simple graph. But in the next video, we will see that when we have a complicated graph, there are many spanning trees possible for the same graph. So to solve this problem, we have two algorithms. That is, we have the Prim's algorithm. Okay. And we have the. Kruskal algorithm that we are going to discuss in the 
coming presentations our main motive is to find the minimum of all the spanning trees finding a spanning tree is very very easy we will see in the next presentation finding the spanning tree is very very easy but we if we have to find the spanning tree with the minimum cost then we have to use the algorithms that we are going to discuss in the next video thank you for watching that's all for this video